friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're doing well. Welcome to 12 Days of Book Miss, day five. I can't believe we are almost halfway through this little series and man, the days are just flying by. But today we have a really fun video to talk about and that is some audiobook recommendations. As you guys know, I'm a huge, huge audiobook advocate. I think that audiobooks are amazing. I love them personally. It really helps me read, helps me stay on track. It just gives me a second version of which I can experience the books that I read and I absolutely love them. Um, I have read a ton, a ton of books this year via audiobook um, and there are definitely some ones that have stood out from the crowd and made a big difference in my reading experience and really changed the way that I thought about audiobooks as a whole. So I figured this would be a great video for those of you guys that aren't super into audiobooks, have given them a try and haven't loved them, or just looking for some really good audiobook recommendations um, for books that you would like to pick up in the future. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. I have 20 audiobook recommendations here for you today. Um, and I think that th this video will really be helpful for a lot of people out there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so for the first two books that we're going to talk about, these are the books that I don't actually own, but I did really enjoy the audiobook, and they stuck with me enough for me to want to put them in this video, even though I don't physically own them as a reminder. So that shows you something. <laughs> but the first one that I want to talk about is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. I loved this book so much. I think that it was such a fun romance, definitely a different twist on how a romance um, relationship can come together and flourish and I really really enjoyed that. This follows um, two characters who live in the same apartment and share the same bed but they don't ever see each other. The girl works days and the guy works nights and so they never have the opportunity to meet but they end up creating this relationship through post-it notes and little notes here and there around the house and it was just a fun awesome experience um, and it's one of the first audiobooks I've ever listened to and so I think that's why it had a, such a huge impact on me but not only that it is also um, duly narrated so the book is told in dual perspectives and both the perspectives from the book were narrated by two separate um, narrators which really brought the story to life and gave it a little bit more um, oomph when you're listening to a story especially if you're not reading along it just gives you a chance to separate the characters and really understand their personalities um, when they do have their own narrators and I really enjoyed that about this book I think that it's a fun um, very interesting romance um, there is some smuttiness in there which all of you guys know I love, but overall really enjoyed the audiobook and would definitely recommend it. And I apologize if you guys can hear my neighbors. They are really loud and they have kids and I just I can't control it. So I apologize about that. But um, the next book that I'm going to recommend, the only other book in this list that I don't own, and that is The Last Black Unicorn by Tiffany Haddish. This is a memoir and this is one memoir that I overall really enjoyed. I wouldn't say it's my favorite memoir that I've listened to, but it is really, really good. And I think the beauty of this particular mem memoir was the fact that it was um, narrated by Tiffany Haddish herself. And if you guys know anything about Tiffany Haddish, she is a comedian. She is very eclectic. She has a very um, coined voice. And when I hear her voice, I know exactly who's talking. Um, and so that really brought this story to life. It was very comical and there was a lot of hard hitting topics that were brought up in this book, but she went about them from a comedian standpoint and she did a really good job at just, you know, making the hard-hitting topics light and easy to talk about and listen to um and there is one particular chapter in this book that still gets me to this day like if i could just like take that audiobook section of the book and just keep it for myself and listen to it whenever i'm down um it would be great because i remember driving on the freeway um by myself in my car sobbing crying so hard because it was so funny i, ha I eventually had to come home and play it for my husband because i was dying laughing so hard. So this was a fantastic memoir, a really good audiobook, and definitely recommend that one. All right, let's talk about the books that I do actually own. The first one that I'm going to talk about is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I really, really enjoyed this book as a whole. I love this romance, but the audiobook was also really good. I think that, um, especially for people that aren't super interested in reading romance books, I think that listening to rom romance books can be um, just a one step better than actually physically reading them um, because it helps you get through the story faster but it also brings the story to life in a different way than you would just reading it. Um, that's the thing that I love about audiobooks and I think that that helped the story um, a lot and really heightened my enjoyment of the book as a whole. Um, I really enjoyed reading this. I really I really enjoy the characters and I think that overall the audiobook was really enjoyable. I think for a lot of these 
Um, this was based on my personal experience, but um, this was another audiobook that I listened to very early on in my audiobook experience, and this really helped me to fall in love with audiobooks. So that's why some of these aren't like overly, um, like overly produced and don't, don't, don't have a huge production or a full cast, but something about them brought an extra umph to the story that I really think that will help you guys if you're looking for a good audiobook. Um, if you guys don't know what this is about, this follows the um, president's son as well as the um, son of the uh king of the, the the royal family and um they end up creating this really wonderful gay relationship and it just warms my heart and my experience listening to the audiobook was really amazing so definitely recommend this all right the next books that i'm going to talk about are actually a whole series i read all of these on audiobook and just extremely enjoyed my experience i think that this is probably one of my favorite audiobook narrations just because it brought a little extra magic and spice to the series and i love it and that is the um nevermore series by jessica, Town jessica townsend um so first we have nevermore then wondersmith and holopox if you guys haven't heard about the series where have you been or have you been living under a rock it is probably one of the most talked about middle grade series that there is and it is for good reason i adore this series. This follows Morgan Crow, who is destined to die on, die on the eve of her 11th birthday. But on that day, she gets whisked away by this guy named Jupiter to a um, town called Nevermore. And um, her story just kind of expands and blooms from there. But the audiobooks are just a lot of fun. I think that the narrator that they chose for this character was spot on. And there's also some like um, music at the end of every chapter and like like sometimes it's ominous music, sometimes it's happy music, and it just adds a little bit extra to the story itself. And it really made my um, experience of reading these books so much more fun. Um, like I said, the just extra charm that was put into the actual production of this audiobook brought the story to life even more, and I would definitely 100% recommend this. All right, up next, we're going to talk about my favorite memoir to date, and that is We're Gonna Need More Wine by Gabrielle Union. This memoir just broke me and healed me all at the same time. Um, I've talked about loving this book on my channel many times and that is just because this story was the first book that I ever read that I felt seen and it was just fantastic. Again, this is a memoir, so I feel like the enjoyment of this book will be um, based on your personal taste. But overall, I enjoyed the memoir audiobook because again, it is narrated by Gabrielle Union herself and she brings her story to life like no one else can and so that really heightened the experience of reading this book again um there are some hard-hitting topics in this book there are um intense details of rape and sexual assault there are some trigger warnings for death gang violence gang, gang retaliation um murder so definitely go in this treading lightly if those kind of things trigger you but overall this book is fantastic i still to this day have not found a book that has touched me the way that this book has so um, I feel like a nonfiction has just a, a different way of connecting to a reader because it's real life, it's real, and these people have actually experienced what they're talking about. And the audiobook of this, just hearing her pain and her joy and her triumph and all of the moments of this book were just fantastic and 100% recommend. If you have not read this, 100% pick it up and pick it up the audiobook. All right, up next, we're going to talk about another series, and that is the Wayward Children series by Shauna McGuire. I have the first two books, I'm sorry, the, the first book and the third book in the series. Um, somebody actually gifted this to me recently, so thank you so much. Um, but I don't have the second book, but the second book is actually my favorite audiobook of three so f or of the two so far. I haven't actually read the third book yet, but um, of Every Heart of Doorway and Down Among the Six and Bones, Down Among the Six and Bones was my favorite audiobook of the two, but I think that the series is really amazing and um, is really easy to read in audiobook format because they are so short. They are novellas. They're about, um, like I would say like 200 pages each and about four hours long via audiobook or two hours long, sorry, two hours long via audiobook. And it was just an easy, quick read. But the audiobook brings out the details and the lyrical beauty of these stories so much more than just reading it on paper, personally in my experience. Um, Shauna McGuire has a wonderful way of writing their stories where their characters, their details are really pulled and brought to life. But the audiobook tr like translation of this um, just made those characters even more tangible and even more palpable. And it just allowed the story to grow even more than it already ha does and um, will in your mind. So I 100% recommend this if you're looking for a good short audiobook um, just to get yourself into audiobooks and you're looking for a fun novella fantasy. This is definitely the way to go. 
All right, we're gonna talk about another favorite book of mine, a book that I've talked about several times now, actually in this uh, 12 Days of Book Miss, and that is Pet by Aquadia Mezzi. Um, as you guys know, this is one of my favorite books of the year and with, with total reason, but the audiobook was also really fantastic. Again, this is another audiobook that is super short. The book itself is super short and um, it just helps especially the emotions that the, the main character in this book is feeling, it helped that come to life so much more. I absolutely loved the narrator of this book. I feel like she brought the character um, to life and really um, suited the character's emotions and um, mindset um, to a T. So I really, really recommend this audiobook. I recommend this book as a whole. This is a fantastic book that is a huge metaphor for life, um, human beings, the mon monstrous things that human beings are capable of, and what society um, accepts. And so I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed the book as a whole, and I will definitely reread it sometime in the future, but the audiobook is 100% the way to go. All right, up next we have another memoir, and this memoir broke my heart, but had me rolling laughing all in the same vein, and it is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. This is a fantastic, fantastic memoir. I think out of all the memoirs that I have, um, recommended today. This is probably the most uh, relatable and easily digestible. Not, I wouldn't say relatable in regards to his particular situation because I've never read or about or heard another person that went through what he went through, but he's so personable and so uh, open about the way that he shares his story that it just, just it feels very relatable to the things that you could have experienced growing up as a kid. So overall, this was a wonderful story. Um, the end had me crying like a big old baby and I laughed. I cried throughout the entire book and it was just so engaging and so wonderful. Uh, Trevor Noah's story is very interesting and very particular. This is about his life where he was born in Africa in the time of apartheid and apartheid was basically a time when it was illegal to be in a mixed relationship, to be um, a mixed child, to um, have a child that was mixed. And so um, he obviously is mixed. His father is um, white and his mother is black. And so he was literally born a crime and he spends a lot of his time sheltered and in hiding because he can't really be seen with his mother outside in society. So this was a fantastic story. Definitely recommend it if you're looking for a good memoir. And the audiobook for this is wonderful. Trevor Noah, again, narrates this himself. He has a wonderful accent that just pulls you into his story. And it just makes it feel more real like you're in the book because a lot of this is told in like some of it is told in like his mother's um, accent or um, his accent from the um from when he was younger and it's just it was just it was wonderful it was so good i can't recommend this book enough i loved it and i'm sure that you will love it as well all right up next we're going to talk about one of my favorite audiobooks that i have listened to so far and that is daisy jones and the six now every single person that i came across that has read this book and listened to the audiobook always always recommended it to me um and you know i I took their advice. I was going to listen to the audiobook regardless, but um, I took their advice and they were not wrong. I was not disappointed. The reason this audiobook is so special is because it is a full cast. Every single character in this book that is talked about, that is um, shown, has their own narrator. And because this book is told in interview format, um, it really brings this story to life and makes it feel absolutely real. Almost every single person that I've talked to that has read this has said to me, man, when I got to the end of the book, I just felt like I can go online and listen to like YouTube videos of their music because it just felt so real because this, the actual narrators of this book brought the characters and the story to life in more ways than one. This is, um, I would say like historical fiction, I guess. It's kind of like a weird way to like place to put it but it follows um a band called um the six and then daisy jones and how the two individual entities come together to phone form daisy jones and the six a band that was very popular in the height of the 80s i believe and eventually their downfall and it's a fantastic story it flew by really quickly because it is an in interview format it just seems to kind of um, breeze by and it's almost like you're listening to a podcast or watching an interview just with the screen black because Oh, it was just beautifully put together and I absolutely 100% recommend this. It is such a good book, but the audiobook is so amazing. Okay, so this next one is a nonfiction. I'm a huge advocate for reading nonfiction via audiobook, especially because I feel like it makes the nonfiction that you're reading that much more easily digestible. Sometimes when I'm reading big words on a page or um, complex ideas on a page, it makes it hard for my brain to understand. So when somebody else is reading it to me, it just makes it so much more digestible and 
understandable. I don't know how else I can explain that. But what I'm talking about is So You Want to Talk About Race. This is a fantastic anti-racism book. Um, definitely one that I recommend. I think that um, the actual way that this was format formatted and written and put together um, in and of itself makes it easily digestible. And um, I really liked the messages that were in here. This is very um, open and raw and talks a lot about obviously racism, microaggressions, intersexuality, um, learning how to deal with your own racism and how to apologize and how to just accept the fact that sometimes the things that you say can be racist and how to move on from that after. And so this is a fantastic nonfiction book about racism, but the audiobook just made it a beautiful experience for me. Also, it also has to do with the fact that one of my favorite audiobook narrators narrates this book, and I will actually be talking about her three times in this um, in this little video, so that tells you how much I enjoy her audiobook narrations, but she really just knows how to bring out the emotions of a story and make it feel like you're sitting down listening to this person in an auditorium talk about um, their experiences as well as how to combat racism in a very overtly racist world. So I just thought it was amazing. It's a wonderful audiobook. It's really actually quite quick because the book itself is quite short, but it was definitely um, a good choice for audiobook. If you read it physically, that's totally fine as well. But I just think that this one really heightened my experience and helped me understand the words on the page so much more. All right, I feel like I should just talk about these ones together because it's the same author, different books, but same author. And I'm going to talk about Elizabeth Acevedo. So we have The Poet X, uh, Clap When You Land, and With the Fire on High. All three of these books were absolutely phenomenal. My personal favorite is With the Fire on High. I just feel like um, the book that wasn't written in verse just brought so much more life to the story than a book that's written in verse could. However, I still love her books written in verse. I think they are fantastic. Of the two books written in verse, I would definitely recommend The Poet X. But I think the main reason why I love these books so much was because of the audiobooks. Elizabeth Acevedo narrates all of her audiobooks herself. Aside from Clap When You Land, she had another narrator um, because this is about two sisters and it has two perspectives, but she did narrate one section of the book and it was an amazing experience just to listen to Elizabeth Acevedo bring her stories to life because as a writer you know how you want the story to be portrayed and I think that she did a fantastic job of putting that onto a track. Um, and allowing that to flourish, especially with books written in poetry. Books written in poetry are definitely an interesting thing to put together because as a poet, you write down things down and you have your own inflection and your own um, emotions that go into the words that some people don't always interpret. And the fact that she narrated her own books in verse really brought that out and really allowed the story itself to hit in the right spots where she wanted them to hit and pull back when she wanted them to be pulled back. And I think that just really brought the story to fruition. Um, definitely 100% recommend all of her audiobooks. They are amazing. And I will definitely continue to listen to her audiobooks as she produces more and puts out more books. So 100% recommend this. Elizabeth Acevedo is now one of my favorite authors and will probably continue to stay that way. All right, we're about to talk about another series and that is the Brown Sister series by Talia Hibbert. I love these books. I've made it no secret. Uh, I have shouted from, about these from the rooftops. I love these books, but I love the audiobooks of these so much, and I'm really glad that I read them um, and listened to them this way. Um, I think the reason why I love these audiobooks are a little bit different than most people, but hear me out. <laughs> um, the narrators of this sound like a very old um, English grandma, or British grandma, I can't remember where they're from, but um, it is probably when I say that doesn't seem very appealing when you're going into an audiobook, but for some reason it works. It works and it's almost brings like the smutty book, smutty parts of the book, as well as the comedy um, out more because it's like, I'm listening to this old, older, <laughs> I shouldn't say old, <laughs> older um, lady read me these sex scenes and I find it entertaining and enjoyable. So overall, the audiobooks of these are great. I love the books as a whole, but I feel like the audiobooks, again, heightened my experience and made the um, actual reading experience so much better. And I think back on these books um, more fondly be because of the audiobooks. So again, another one that I absolutely recommend. All right, let's talk about a book that I didn't enjoy, but I think that if you like this book, 
um, then 100% do the audiobook because it's the only reason that I made it to the book at all. And that is The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. I didn't care for this book and you know I'm sad about that but you can't love them all but what I did love was the audiobook. This audiobook was so well put together that it's kind of crazy um, and the only reason I made it through this book was because the audiobook was phenomenally done. Um, I think that the, the thing that I loved so much about the audiobook is they put so much time and effort into it. They added sound effects, they added you know when the when the words say oh the villain cackled. They added the cackle in instead of saying the words and it really just made it feel like you were watching a movie come to life um, right out of the pages and it just it was such an interesting experience especially seeing as I didn't love the book but the audiobook was just so fun to listen to all of the hard work and dedication that they put into this book and I would 100% recommend the audiobook if you are going to read this. I just think the book wasn't for me. I have um, talked to several people that love this book and I think that if you like N.K. Jemisin's writing style, if you like her story work, then you will definitely enjoy this. It just wasn't my cup of tea, but definitely recommend the audiobook. Okay, let's talk about another book in verse and that is Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. I really enjoyed this book. I think that this was an interesting story to read in verse especially, but the audiobook again was amazing. This follows the same vein as Elizabeth Acevedo. Um, Jason Reynolds does narrate the audiobook himself and again the same points that I made about um, the author knowing when and where to add in the things that he wanted um, for the books in verse um, stands true for this one. I really liked the storyline and I really liked where this book went. I really liked the fact that it was written in verse. I think that that really worked for the subject matter that this is talked about and it was very very powerful and I think that the audiobook is a great way to go for this. Again because it's written in verse it's super super short. I think it was like maybe two and a half hours of audiobook listening and it was so worth it. Um, this is about a boy who his brother was just killed um, due to gang violence and he ends up getting on the elevator um, to leave his home to go retaliate against the person that killed his brother and each time that the elevator stops at a new floor somebody from his past gets on somebody from his past that is no longer living and um they're just sharing their experience with the system and the world around them and it really helps him to um kind of decide what he's going to do moving forward um, and the crazy thing about this book is it takes place in one single minute. Um, so it's a really interesting book. It has a lot going for it. But the audiobook was definitely the way to go with this one. It just made my experience amazing. All right, the next two books I'm going to talk about are um, books that I loved via audiobook, but also had to do with the fact that I loved the narrator. And this is the same narrator that did um, So You Want to Talk About Race. The first one I'm going to talk about is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. Um, the reason that I love this audiobook so much was that um, the characters in this book have an accent and the narrator did the accent. I don't exactly know where the accent is from. It sounded very um, like maybe South African or African accent and it was just done so well. But not only that, but this audiobook narrator has a knack and ability to put so much raw emotions into her words when she narrates the books. And so this particular book um, Azalee is going through a lot, um, having lost her mom when she was young and is trying to go on this quest to save magic and bring magic, magic back to the magis that live in this world. Um, but she's dealing with a lot of anger, a lot of pain, a lot of hurt, and the author really pulls on that and um, allows that to be heard in her voice when she is um, speaking in the, in the narration of Zaylee. And it just was wonderfully, wonderfully done. And the fa the fight scenes, the scenes where the character is crying or choked up, it is so much, it's like, it's portrayed in this book so well that it just made the experience of reading this like 10 times better. I was in a reading slump when I read this and if it wasn't for the narration of this book, I don't think I would have loved it as much as I did, especially seeing as I was having a hard time getting through it. But overall, really enjoyed the book and the narration of this was amazing. And the same thing goes for um, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. The same narrator, um, again, I have the same thoughts for the emotion and the um, anger and the pain that this character goes through um, is pulled into the story based on the way that the narrator tells it. And it just made the story feel like I could reach out and grab it, especially with the nature of this particular book. This follows um, a girl named Star who is a witness to um, her one of her best friends getting shot and killed by the police um, after they get pulled over. And um, 
as you can probably guess, there's a lot of emotions that are attached to that. And every single emotion that Star went through and experienced throughout this book was portrayed in the audiobook narration. And again, applause to the narrator for that because it's just fantastic. I will leave this narrator in the description box below. I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but I will find it and leave it down there if you guys are interested in figuring out any more books that she narrates. But again, 100% five star, recommend the audiobook, read it. <laughs> All right, we are down to our last two. The next one I'm going to talk about is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I enjoy um, audiobooks for thrillers as a whole. I just think that it brings a little bit ex something extra to the book, adds a more spooky factor, um, and I really enjoy reading my, my uh, thrillers that way. But this one just has something special, and I think that because of the way that this book is written, it really brought that out. And this follows a woman whose father has just passed away and she is returning to this house that has been her family for 25 years. Her mom and her dad and herself lived there for 20 days and um, after the 20th day they fled in the middle of the night never to return and her dad actually ended up writing a book about it and um, she doesn't believe anything that happened in this book is real so she returns back to that house to figure out why they really fled and the secrets that their family has been harboring for 20 years. Um, so the reason that this audiobook was so awesome was the fact that the actual snippets from her dad's book are written in every other chapter. And so you're getting her perspective, which is narrated by, um, I believe, I think there, there's dual narrators, um, narrated by the, the, the voice of the woman. But then you also have the dad's book, which is narrated by the voice of the guy. And it just brought the story to life. I really appreciated um, that portion of the book so much. And to hear it um, come to life, like, hearing her sections of the book come to life but also going into the past and reading his book just made the actual experience of listening to this so much more satisfying and I enjoyed it all the way through. Definitely recommend this audiobook and this book as a whole. Okay the next one that we're going to talk about is one that I'm pretty sure most people have talked about in their audiobook recommendations if they've read this and that is Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Again this is a fantastic audiobook. Probably one of the, again, one of the best audiobooks I've ever listened to. Again, this is a um, full cast audiobook and you have sound effects, you have just everything you could think of that you could put in an audiobook. They did. And it was just amazing. This is a sci-fi about two teenagers who have just broken up um, right as their world is being um, invaded and they end up on two different spaceships and they're um, conversing with each other and trying to figure out what's really going on in this crazy like battle for their lives and um you're reading it in mixed media format but you're also reading it as if um you're looking in from the future about the past like the government is constructing an interview um and and an investigation about what actually went down and so it's a really interesting concept i really enjoyed the story in and of itself but the audiobook the audiobook was just out of this world amazing and 100% saved this book for me because sci-fi is really hard for me to wrap my head around. And so for those times when I was really confused, the audiobook just made my experience so joyous that I just couldn't help but continue to read and stick through it. And definitely amazing, 100% recommend. Out of almost all of the audiobooks, this is probably one of my favorites just because of the full cast and the noises in the background. It was just amazing. All right, that is all of the audiobooks that I wanted to talk about today. I really hope that this was helpful for those of you guys that um, are scared of audiobooks and want to give one a try or are looking for some really good audiobooks um, that you haven't yet listened to. Um, and so I hope that it was helpful for you guys. But um, that is the end of this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you made it to the end of this, leave a headphones emoji. If there's not a headphones emoji, emoji leave a music emoji. Something about listening, you know. <laughs> we'll try to be thematic here. Um, but that is the end of this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you guys will stay tuned for tomorrow for um, 12 Days of Book Miss Day 6. And with that being said, let's close out this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And of course, leave any comments, questions, and suggestions in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.